as you notice, I'll be using this book for our lesson. The only path to Dibbana will go directly to what the Buddha taught. So we are actually right, still with the body, uh, posture, various posture. But for the, those uh, beginners, I will probably go back a little bit, just go through briefly before I continue on with the lesson. Last week, we are on the subject of the body, the conventional truth or conventional reality, those uh, things that we agree, accepted, that this is my body, this is, uh, belongs to me, it's mine, this is my body. So these are accepted truth. That is called the uh, conventional truth. But when we practice insight meditation, we sort of go to the basic composite of the body. What is it made of? And then we say it is made of the four great elements and the other 24 derivatives. But for our meditation practice, we use the four main great elements that this body is consists of, simply known as uh, earth, water, fire, and wind. So, in other words, this body is actually consists of the four great elements, which is similar, which is the same as any other body. So, if we pass away and supposing cremate the body, then the body all turn to dust. So it has the same basic content. So it is just the body. Now, if we practice mindfulness meditation by going deep into the truth of this body, then we are less inclined to strongly attach to this body, which produce a lot of suffering. When we grow old, when we are sick, when we are going to die, to leave this body behind, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of sadness, there's a lot of sorrow, whether this body or even external bodies we recognize as our loved ones, our dear ones, and if they were to leave this world, it causes a lot of grief, a lot of pain, because we recognize that body as your son or daughters or wife or husband or father or uncle, aunties. We, rec we recognize them by way of concept that there is this body that is my uncle. Basically, it is just a body. When a person dies, then there's no more consciousness. It's just made of the four great elements. Now, it is by training our mind to see beyond the superficial, seeing beyond what we always tend to see, that we will not be affected by the concepts that we built up since we are, we are young built up a lots and lots of concepts and these concepts are of course the conceptual realities but they produce a lot of pain so it is like this body which we call my body which the Buddha says uh, what monk is this attachment to this body because they approach the Buddha and say this is my body, this is my mind. And the Buddha say, it is just the body. Body is just the body. And the Buddha says then, what monks is the attachment to the body? Suffering? Because monks, the body is painful by nature. Therefore, attachment to the body that is painful is suffering. 
Now, once we attach to this body, then there's a lot of suffering because this body is by nature painful. Now, once you meditate, you will know that this body is indeed painful. When you work too much, when you have too much things to do, you get frustrated, you become angry, become disturbed. Why must I work so hard? And the other person is sitting, doing nothing. For example, the sister will say, I, I, I wash the house, I clean the house, I wash the dish, uh, but my brother is sitting there doing nothing. So he works so hard. So the body feels the pain. So she gets angry. Now what happens if you don't do anything at all? Like for example, when you come for meditation, you don't even have to move your fingers. You don't even have to move your toes. Sit exactly still for 15 minutes. Then you feel that is the torture. You feel that, wow, so difficult. Cannot move for 15 minutes. Sure die one. So do nothing, also die. Do something, also die. Because it's the nature of this body. That is painful. So we move all the time, consciously or unconsciously, so that we would not feel the body pain. From sitting, we stand, stand, we walk, walk, we lie down. We keep on changing posture, start moving all the time, so that we do not feel the body pain. In other words, unconsciously, we are trying to escape from the body pain and sometimes by a lot of enjoyment, exercise, playing games. So we use the body for a lot of joy, for sports, which we think perhaps makes us healthy. But the fact is, the body is painful. Now if we so attach to this body, then our mind will experience pain. If you think that, Ayo, my leg is so numb, so numb, what happened afterwards? Become paralyzed if I don't move? Then the mind suffers. Then the mind fear arises. Then mind say, okay, I better change now. What if I'm paralyzed? Then what happened to me? Then perhaps you think I will sue Brother James. Sue him, eh? But you won't get paralyzed. Even if you meditate three hours, four hours at one go, you won't get paralyzed at all. It is the blood that is uh, uh, slowed down, you get numbness, and then the blood goes up towards your, your brain, so you become more alert, that's all. So, there is this mindfulness of meditation is to be detached. And watching this body, whatever arises in this body, whether it is painful or whether it is joyful. Sometimes the body experiences a lot of joy as well in meditation. When you gain through detachment, you gain that calmness. Then the mind experiences joy. Then the body becomes comfortable and light. And there is no more pain, totally. You don't feel any pain at all in the body except a sense of lightness, very comfortable. Now you experience that as well or coolness of the body. You feel very cold. The sensation like very light so you're floating. You experience the pleasant feeling as well in meditation. But generally, most of the time, you feel the discomfort. For the beginners, mostly you feel the discomfort. You feel the pain arises to this body. Numbness, heat, various types of pain that I have talked about in a previous lesson. But we learn to detach to the body, to observe the body as the body as the element. So when there is time for, we, for us to use it, 
where we are unduly attached to the body and produce so much pain, for example, if you are sick, then you say, Ayo, why am I sick? Oh, why am I sick? I can't do a lot of things I want to do because I'm sick. I got a headache. I got so much pain in my back. And if you are attached to this body, then you suffer a lot. Then every day you complain about the pain in your body. And your mind is very sad and unhappy for the rest of your life until you die. But if you were to practice detachment, separate your mind from the body. The body is the body. The mind is the mind. They are two different things. They are not the same. Mind is immaterial. Body is material. They are not the same. Totally different. If you were to practice that detachment, to note that there is this pain arising from the body. This body is painful. But it is not there all the time. It arises, it passes away. It arises, it passes away. But only when you take it as constant pain, you see it as a whole mess of pain without breaking it out. Then your mind cannot bear the pain because you take it as a whole pain and it's so strong pain. But if you were to break it out, it is merely feelings. It's just a type of feeling arises from your body. Body consciousness. It's a feeling. And the mind becomes unaffected by the painful feeling. Another method of practicing mindfulness on the body is because the body object is very gross. It can easily detectable. You can observe it quite distinctly, quite clearly because of the element of movement. When you do walking, you can quite clearly aware of the movement, like walking movement. The Mahasi methods, they devise it into one step, two step, three step, four, five, six step. Easier to practice for beginners. But the Buddha didn't say that. The Buddha says walking as walking. Just walking. Just the body movement. Buddha do not uh, teach about the six steps. But it is helpful for beginners. Otherwise, they do not know what to watch. So if you do the... Uh, one step walking. Now you find that the one step walking, just the normal walking, is the body movement, the air element. And when your soul press on the floor is hardness, then it is earth element. Or if the floor is cold, then it is called the temperature, fire element. It could be hot, it could be cold, but it's still called the fire element. But actually, it is called the temperature. So we use it for simplicity and say it is fire. So the manifestation of this element arises internally or externally. Now, which are you going to take? Are you going to take the motion or are you going to take the earth element, hardness, or softness, or heat. So normally, when you walk fast, you have just to take one. If you take two, it's too fast. When you walk one step, it's a fast walking. So if you have to take two objects, it is very difficult to take two objects when you're walking fast. So you just take the uh, earth element as you right leg walking, the pressure there. So you note the pressure and the left leg walking, the pressure, just the pressure, just the touching, the pressure. That is one step. The two step is the lifting and the pushing. So you're aware that you're lifting 
then you are pushing as you touch the floor. The three step is lifting, pushing, and down, treading. That's the three steps. So normally we just do one, two, three steps for beginners. Why? 